Hi guys, today's video is about true scaling. Um, true scaling is essentially about correcting the inaccuracies in the way that the Space Marines look. Uh, the heroic scale, I think they call it. Um, the issue, the big issue that I have and that a few people have is that um, they don't look right. The, as, as a, a human body should be seven heads from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet. So if you look at this, this is one that I've done earlier. Uh, this is more like what we should be looking at. And you can see the difference in height straight away between where the knees are. The big problem with the Space Marines, well, there's two big problems. Their shins are tiny. So the difference between their knees and their feet is too small. And they also don't have any hips they just or or abdomen they just go from torso straight into legs basically so the, what we're going to end up with uh is longer legs and a padded out torso the torso is a very easy thing to remedy um the legs are harder so i've chosen these guys this is mark three forge world um, breacher legs uh, so we're going to do some breaches. Uh, and the basic the basic method um, that I'll show you is very similar to a guy called Jack at Anvils of Konor. You're probably following him on Instagram or possibly on YouTube. Uh, he has done a great tutorial over on uh, YouTube. Oh, not YouTube, sorry, on Instagram a while ago now on how he does his... Jack is much, much, much better at green stuff than I am. <laughs> I'm not as good. So the way I do mine <clears throat> is I like to cut here. At the bottom, if you look at the back of them, I cut at the bottom of this armor panel here. So you can see there's these little, uh, I don't know what these are, detail bits and rivets here. If I cut here, I'm going to have to do the rivets and I'm gonna to have to do these things, otherwise it's gonna look funny. The way I do it, I do it here, which means that I can just basically have another section. See this section that's that's smooth, doesn't have much detail on it? We're gonna have two of those and two of these. Um, and I, for me, I think that works. If you don't think that works and your green stuff skills are infinitely better than mine, then yeah, but feel free to cut them here. The big thing to be careful of is at the front of the legs here, you do have two bolts. So you want to go above the bolts. Let's see if we can get that to show. Above the bolts and below this thing at the back here. Um, yeah. You'll notice that I've cut my fucking finger yet again. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, yeah. That was fun. Uh so we're going to cut him here. We're going to wear a mask, obviously, because this is uh, Forge World Resin. You really should be wearing a mask when you do this. Uh, yeah, the first first thing, though, before we start doing any cutting, we want to have our extender bits ready. Now, here's a good one. I cut a whole load of these just off styrene tube. I've just gone to the hobby store and taken a set of legs and measured the styrene tube that is the closest approximation to the diameter of the leg. Now, you obviously don't want it to go all the way around, so this is the same thickness as the, the sorry about that, the front section of this armor panel here. Uh, at the back, it obviously needs to be thinner. So, all we do is we, if you look at this, it's not quite half. It's just a little bit more than half. So we just go like, that and we go like that you can keep this piece for later and you have a look at here you can see yeah. sorry you have to excuse my big fat fingers i um have been working today and my hands are covered in um glue from work so that's looking about right to me, but we can trim it later. Always have a little bit more uh, than you think you're going to need. And then we do the other side. So just copy it. Trim a little bit more than you think you're going to need. 
Now this is quite an involved process. Uh, it is by no means something that is going to be quick. It's gonna take a while. So I generally, I'll get a production line going and I'll work in batches of sort of 10, 15, 20, at least 10. Uh, I wouldn't bother doing it for, with any less than 10. It's just because it is a pain in the ass. Um, this leg stuff, uh, yeah, I don't really enjoy this leg section stuff, but you know, I, I think it's got to be done. If, if I want the correct mark of armor, um, it's really, I think, got to be done. And I sort of, I sort of do. I would prefer it to be the right mark of armor. The other way to true scale is to use um, uh, terminator legs because the terminator legs are already there. I'll show you what they look like. If you do it with those guys, they also work. So here's a set of Gorgon Terminator legs. These haven't been cleaned up or anything, they haven't been washed. But these are cl much closer to how the legs should look. So if you've got loads and loads of money uh, and you don't know what to do with that money and you want to true scale 100 guys, yeah, you, I mean, you go out and you drop, oh, what would that cost? This, uh, this, is, this thing's $120 Australian for five of them. Yeah, it's going to cost you thousands of dollars. Um, but, you know, you might have that. Uh, if you do, that's, um, yeah, that I think that looks pretty cool too. The cataphracty, the cataphracty legs are the ones to have. Um, yeah. So, all right, let's crack on. So what we're going to need, we're going to need the legs. We're going to need these little guys here that I've shown you, which is a styrene tube. We're going to use this, which is solid styrene rod. Uh, and that is going to go, I'm going to cut this to size and it's going to go in there. And this is just get, adds, it goes in there and it adds a little bit of extra strength. Um, the way to cut styrene rod is with one of these. It's a pipe cutter. It's like your, uh, like a pipe cutter from a hardware store for cutting, um, you know, PVC drain pipe, that sort of stuff. But it is much, much smaller. It is a hobby product. It's made in America. It's good. This thing's awesome. Um, I've had this for a long time and it, it works really, really well. Uh, you just adjust where this thing is and it cuts to different diameters and then you just twist it around. Um, green stuff. You can tell this is green stuff because it's got green stuff written on it. Uh, a little bowl with water. Clean all the crap away from your working area. I mean, it's about to get a whole lot more crap on it. Um, when we cut this, you'll see what I mean in a second. Uh, and then you clean that away before you get your green stuff out. Uh, what I've got here as well, which helps to neaten things up a bit at the back, is a little styrene strip. This styrene strip is 0.25 millimeters by two millimeters. So it's 0.25 millimeters thickness, um, which I think is, uh, well, let's call it five eighths of fuck all. So five eighths of fuck all by uh, two mils there. And that's what we're gonna need. That and a mask and lots of time and patience and uh, have some swear words ready because no doubt if you're using green stuff, you're gonna need some swear words. I'll show you the green stuff tools that we're gonna use later. We're not quite at that stage yet. So let's uh, crack on. I'll cut this, I'll get my mask on. One leg on my shoulder, two legs on my shoulder. <laughs> All right, here we go. Around the right way. Looks like it's about where we want it. And we just gently start soaring away. Gently, 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 gently. See all the dust that this is making? It's nasty stuff. How good does that band-aid look in the in the shot there? It's nice, isn't it?
Gently, gently, gently. You don't want to do this too quickly. You want this process to be long and drawn out and painful. So we look at that there. <laughs> it always does that. So we just clean up the edges with your finger. That's fine. And you can see that we've cut it. Now, I've cut it above the two bolts that I needed to miss. Um, put this aside so that you know which foot it is. Don't get them confused. And really, 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 really super important. Just cut one set of legs at a time. you got to do it once. If you go through and get a production line going and get all the, get five guys and cut all their feet off, cut all the bottoms off, you're guaranteed, absolutely 100% guaranteed to get it wrong, to get all of this just wrong. So they're all, you're going to have the wrong feet everywhere. Yeah, it's going to look super weird. So I'm going to go ahead, cut the rest, and I'll um, come back through the magic of um, the, well, I wouldn't call it editing. Let's call it the stop button. Okay, so we're back. We've cut the, uh, well, I say we, me. I did it all by myself. Cut the um, the legs, and I've got my little bits here. I've also cut these little um, bits of uh, styrene rod. Uh, we will tidy those up a little bit now. Now to glue these, we're going to use we're going to have to use super glue. You can't use plastic glue on this because I'm going onto resin. If you were not going onto resin, if you were going onto just normal plastic, just GW plastic, then 100% you should be using plastic glue. But because we're using um, we're, using, we're dealing with resin here. I've got to use super glue. It's going to be strong enough. Um, I've done, I've done um, the other five breaches, and they're rock solid. Um, they've been done the exact same way. So, just get a little bit of super glue. I use this stuff. I don't know where you know what the whatever the equivalent is in your region. Use that. Um, I like this one because. Number one, it's got that little nozzle, and number two, it's cheap. And yeah, look, as far as I can tell, they're all the same. You don't need to waste money on. I don't. Know, I don't find a difference between this and the ultra expensive stuff. So all I'm doing here, that's the wrong one. I'm putting that guy on. Guy on there. So we want to get this. Sorry, I'm not used to working with the video. So you can see that line is just about right. It means that it does need to be trimmed so that it's straight. So where this comes out, it bows a little bit. So I'll be able to cut that and get it perfect. And likewise there, you always want a little bit extra. You can see here that the this is just shy so you want that one less and this bit more so this bit is less which means that i've got to f i'm going to cover this up with some green stuff um so this will be green stuffed to smooth it down and then i can trim that to get that perfect but we're gonna let that bit sit in there for a bit and dry then we get a little bit more of our super glue Chuck that in there. Now, you might have nice, small, delicate fingers that haven't been um, fucked up by years of the marine industry or some other manual labour. You might find this a bit easier to do than I do, so it might not take you so long. So you can see here there's a little bit of um, shit here. I don't know what you call that, just where the cut's been made. We trim all of that, um, trim that down with a scalpel, or you can get a little file. Those little Citadel files are really good for that, I find. Nice fine files, but let's let that sit and, yeah, get strong. So we're going to let that sit, get strong. Uh, I'm going to do the other one, and uh, I'll come back to you in a sec. All right, we're going to add a little piece of this two mil by uh, five eighths of fuck all styrene strip that I've cut. 
We're going to put that, you can see here, I've done it here on this one already. Um, I've just added two of those, two double thickness, you see there, like that. The idea behind this is to really just minimize the amount of green stuff sculpting you're doing. You're really just filling rather than sculpting. Um, I find that that is much easier for most, I find it easier to cut things and to shape things than to do green stuff sculpting. You may be the other way around, but you know, if you are, then you, you're a better man or woman than I. So let's stick him down. Again, we can always trim this. You've got a little bit of working time, but not a lot because we're using, um, we're using super glue here. I would be using um, plastic glue if we weren't working with Forge World resin. But we're not. We're using Forge World resin, so we're using super glue. As you can see here, I'm going to just clean that up with the knife. Cut that. The more you can do now, the better. I'm just going to get this edge of the armor panel as straight as I can. It's not quite there yet. Just do it in sections. It pays to have a very sharp scalpel blade. Um, I don't know what these scalpel blades are called, but this is my favorite shape of a scalpel blade. It comes from the hobby store. Yeah, it it's, seems to be what works best for me. Again, any little bits like this with the green stuff, for me, the point of the green stuff is to really fix this stuff up. So you can see where we're at. We're actually, we're, we're looking all right. We need to do a little bit of filling. But you can see the bulk of the shape is getting there. So you see there's a little, see there's a gap here. This gap here, we really should be coming out like that. So what you need is, needs to come out there. So all we're doing, the next, once we get the feet on, we're going to run a bit of green stuff. The idea is to run it here. And when you can see it like this, it makes more sense. You run a bit of green stuff here and sculpt it into there. But all you're really doing with your green stuffing then, instead of having to sculpt it all from scratch, let me find my special green stuff tool. We get our green stuff tool and we're just going like that. So pretty much ready to stick the feet on. Now the feet, Make sure that you've got the right feet. So is that the right foot? I don't know. Oh, my God. If you sit them down as um, Forge World intended, so you can see, see it better like this. See, that one will go there. Line up these two bolts. See those bolts? Make sure those bolts line up or else the foot will look really, really, really wrong. Um, and line up on the other side. Your toe, the toe is generally pointing where the the kneecap is pointing. So you can see there, we line up the bolts. There's a bit of a gap at the bottom there, but that's because I need to file down this thing here. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to glue these feet on, and then we'll come back for some green stuffing. So did I file? Thought I'd show this filing process. Why not? So we're just going to file it. It's very, very simple. We just want this to be nice and neat. You can see how long this is going to take. Um, so usually I, I would be, would have done what I would normally do, but I'm doing this for the purposes of the video, really sacrificing myself for you guys um, and girls. Um, I'm, I would normally get the uh, get five legs um, to this stage, and then I would do the green stuff. And I do do the green stuffing in batches of five because it, that's about as long as the working time is that I can I can do five at a time. So it also breaks it up. I find if you do all if you're doing a big batch of like fifteen or twenty of these. After you've done this five times, you're pretty jack of this. You're pretty jack of doing this. It's nice to mix it up, change, do something else. So I'll do the green stuff in five-man five batches because 
Um, yeah, that's how long, that's the working time that I've got with the green stuff. I'm just getting the stuff out of there. Um, yeah, so do that in five, five person batches. So you can see I've sanded that there now. Um, let's make sure we've got the right foot. So this one, I know that the back one has the toe or the heel raised. Uh, the front one is there. And better, it's still, still not quite there. So I'll chop it and file it a bit more. Okay, so I've glued the uh, feet on. You can see here, there are some small gaps here. That is due to the nature of the cut. When you cut something, you are really hampered by the thickness of the blade. The thickness of that blade has meant that that cut is quite, uh, well, it's not perfect. It's not a, like a razor saw or anything. Maybe that's probably something you can invest in. Um, so you can see here that I have made the cut so the idea is to have this parallel. So you want the feet to be, the base of the feet to be um, facing the right way or to be, so that when you stand it up, it will still stand up because that's how it's supposed to do from Forge World. If, you've, if you can get it to stand up, you've gotten the foot pads right. Um, yeah, so there's little gaps there that you can see. You can see these little gaps here. Um, that's where the green stuff is going to be used. You can see on the side here that that panel lines up with that panel, but there's a little gap here that we need to we'll do a little bit of green stuff work there, but it's not a huge amount. Again, same at the back here, a tiny little bit that we can clean up with green stuff. Um, yeah, and you can see there's the gap that we need to fix with the green stuff. And that's the only gap really. If you look, this one's actually a little bit better. We're a bit closer there. Um, yeah, so green stuff. I'm going to clean all this up. So let's clean that up. Get all that off there. Put a little bit of water down. You just don't want the stuff sticking. Um, now, give the stuff a bit of a clean. Make sure there's nothing caught in it. Mix him up. All right, back when it's all mixed. So you can see some changes in the video here through the magic of television. I'm mixing my green stuff. So what I'll show you is this is our one of our shaping tools, rubber tip shaping tool. This is probably the one that you use, you'll use the most because it's a lot smaller. Um, what I do also have is these larger ones. Same, same material. Um, they're really good for... Yeah, it's shaping different. There's different you know, tips that you can get for them. Again, these aren't expensive. These are very cheap. Um, this one it was expensive. I'm not sure why that one was more expensive, um, but these ones were you know a few bucks. For, I think ten bucks for six of them. Um, these are the ones that I use. You can see here that we've got our legs. Instantly, the height is looking more like it should. Um, yeah. So we're only adding. Uh, three mils at the back here, two mils maybe at, the, at these shins, but that makes all the difference. Um, side note, have some of these ready. This is what I use uh, as the, I think the, um, the term that some uh, people use is peturges. Those people are wrong. It's a dick cloth. It's called a dick cloth. So we, I like to have the dick cloth here, hanging down there. Um, Let's show you. Uh, so this is we're gonna have a little green stuff dick cloth there. That's our Mark uh, Mark Four Marine. We have our little dick cloth there to, to add a bit of weight to his skinny little legs because he has skinny little legs, and this adds a bit of weight to the lower half of the model, which gives him a more solid chunky feel, which is what I like. Um, yeah, that's where we're gonna be. Anyway, so you just use your leftover green stuff to make molds and so i just press it into the back there but i'll show you how to do that in a minute all right so you get a tiny tiny bit of green stuff you don't need much you never need much you always will end up with more green stuff than you need i usually just get a little strip like that because you by the time you stick him on always helps to wet your fingers and get your little bowl wet wet the end there 
and just slowly, slowly work it in. As you can see, I'm pushing it in the direction where it needs to go there. Um, I usually start with the back. I don't know why. I just do, probably because that's the bit that's the um, the most annoying. You don't want it to go onto the bits. If you can avoid it, you don't want it to go onto the bits that don't need green stuff, just on the bits that do need the green stuff, because it's a, just saves work later. So keep it neat. You can't rush this, unfortunately. There's just, there's just no way to rush it. Um, Otherwise, it just, yeah, doesn't look good. Um, so I've been doing, I've done a few of these now, 50. Um, and each time I do them, I get better at it. Um, these are the hardest ones, like I said, I think at the beginning, the Mark Threes are really hard to do. Jack at Andals of Conor is really, really good at doing these. Um, and I've, his method's slightly different. Um, he uses a, he drills it and puts a, a um, like a brass rod in to pin the two sections together. Um, I do it this way just because there's less green stuff involved and I think it's just as strong. Um, I haven't had any issues with it anyway. Um, yeah, so you can see here, we're starting, oh, sorry, we're starting to get there now. We're starting to get there. So we can get another, get that wet, get another tiny little bit of green stuff there, maybe just a little bit there, <laughs> got to keep this wet. Half the battle with this stuff is getting the right amount. If you get the right amount, you, you really, you won't, it'll save you so much time. So just really be conscious that it's it's better to have too little than too much because getting the stuff off the model is where you fuck up all the work that you've already done. So if you go, oh, no, look, there's too much. So there's too much here. Now, this will be used there. So you can see I'm pushing that into that panel gap there. But you still need to maintain that hard edge. So we can go like this. I'm not sure if you can see this as well as I would like, but um, this is uh, being filmed with... Um, my mobile phone, which has been blue tacked to the top of a light. So, I mean, it's pretty, it's a jury rigged um, filming method, I know, but uh, yeah, I don't have any money left over to spend on um, camera equipment so I'm just now trying to get that shape that sort of um, almost triangular profile on there Keep these edges neat, as neat as you can anyway. Um, if you're going to use a lot of weathering, I mean, and I use a, I use quite a lot of weathering, um, it's not the end of the world if it's not the neatest stuff in, that you've ever done. But like I said, you'll get better at it as you do it more often. You may never want to do it again after doing it once. 
um, which is, yeah, no one's going to judge you for that. So, I don't know how much more you can take of this. It's pretty, it's pretty riveting TV. Here we go. Uh, you can see that we are looking pretty close there. All I need to do is a little bit of smoothing up, a bit of neatening. Our panel line here is correct. Now to do the front. So the front is probably the easy, easier, but yeah, let's, let's see. So we just get, again, uh, a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit. I think the technical term for this is a bee stick. And you get that, so you get your bee stick there and then you put him down and you cut him in half. You cut your bee stick just in half there. And then you've got um, a metric bee stick. So we get our metric bee stick. Let me stick him on there if we can. This is the, just wonderful stuff to work with. I mean, it's an absolute joy. Just an absolute fucking joy. Come on, get on there, you bastard. There we go. We've got a smear. We've got taken our half a bee stick. We've turned it into a smeared bee's dick of green stuff onto the model. And now we're just going to gently work it into those cracks. Like that. Oh, yeah. We're filling the gaps. And we're doing this as neatly as possible. Being careful not to touch the uh, stuff at the back that we've already done. Until right at the very end, obviously you touch it right at the very end when it's all done and you think, geez, I've done a good job there. And, and then you touch it at the end. Um, so it's important to remember that. I'm just plan for that. We're just going to fill that. You don't need to see me filling that. Um, but yeah, we're going to do it at that pace and with that level of annoyance at the whole process. Yeah. Wow. This is fun, isn't it? Okay, so here we are, we've, I say we again, the Royal We, I've done it, just all by myself, I've filled that up, uh, we've gotten all of our gaps pretty much filled up, and I'm just going around and I'm checking the profile of this so it doesn't look too weird, um, you can see here, I've got some here that I need to clean out of there, just so that it doesn't have a weird, um, you, when you paint this, it, that you will notice that when it's painted, um, there's a little bit here that's not quite right. So there's a few little jobs there. It's taken about for another five minutes, I guess. This is a really handy one to have for the front of the armor because you can wet it and you just go like that. And it's got a bit of a, it's got a bit of give in it, but it's also just the right amount of um, sort of firmness. Um, yeah, it's, look, I, I whinge about this process being annoying. It's not that bad. It's not, um, you know, it, it's frustrating at first and but once you when you get it right it, it's very rewarding um you know it's just the green stuff if you can if there was a better product i would use it there isn't though because this dries very hard and you know we all know the advantages of it so i'm going to go and do the next one um you can mix this stuff with a bit of um milli putt so you mix i, I 50 50 or 75 percent green stuff and 25 percent milli putt uh, yeah, there are certain advantages to that. I haven't done it here just because, um, look, it's, it's easier to sand, certainly, when you use the milli putt. Um, I find it just a bit more annoying to work with, but that's, you know, your mileage may vary. Um, I, that's just my personal opinion. Um, it is, yeah, there are definitely advantages to using it, and I, I think maybe I'm doing it wrong. I, I sort of like to Go, I go back to these things. I'll always change my techniques as I as I go. Keep experimenting. Um, find what works best for you. Uh, this one, yeah, I'm doing just plain straight green stuff for this one. So, yeah, I'm going to go around. I'm going to do the same on this leg. And then we're going to be, um, yeah, we're going to be looking pretty good, I think, for this one. And then we'll, I'll go through and I'll do all the rest. But... You can see I've got a ton of green stuff left over. I'm going to make some, um, after I've done this one, I'm going to make some dick cloths up. Um, 
And yeah, so it, like I said, in a day, I'll get five of these guys done. I'll have all the, all the bits cut. So I'll have all these little, um, these little styrene tubes cut to the size that I want them. Um, and then I'll, uh, yeah, and then I'll just crack on with this, this stage. And then once this stage is done, that'll be it for the day. Uh, or the night, sorry. It's always night. Um, uh, yeah, I'll, I guess five of these will take me a couple of hours. It'll be a couple of hours just to get the legs done. And then we'll let them sit for, oh, usually it's always more than a night. Um, because what I'll do is I'll do the, I'll move on to the next batch. So generally by the time I get round to um, any sort of cleaning up of the green stuff, it'll be oh, two or three days, uh, in which time the green stuff's gone nice and hard. Uh, and then I can um, wet sand it. I always wet sand this stuff. Um, I find that you can't sand it otherwise. So I use like a nice uh, fine stuff uh, like an emery um, board that I got from the hobby store I'll just chuck a little another bee stick on there get on there yes and yeah so after 48 hours you can get the or at least 48 hours you can get the wet sander on there um, and wet sand the certainly the front the back section is pretty pretty hard to get to um, so you want to get this as smooth as you humanly can and get your get get this basically this is this is what you see here is what you're gonna get um, at the back I find and, you know it doesn't look like it doesn't look as good as the original you can tell at the back that something's it's been you know modified at the back here but you know <laughs> I, I just can't handle that, um, those stumpy legs. I mean, I see lots of people, not a problem, and they do amazing paint jobs, and I would be incredibly proud of the armies they produce that uh, that use the old legs. But for me, I don't know, I feel like if I'm going to spend all this time um, painting and converting and posing them and then you know, build, putting them into a diorama or something. I want to, I want to look how I picture them in the, um, you know, in the lore, in the books, in the, um, in the background. Um, and to me, I just think they need to look a little bit more imposing, uh, especially when seen next to like Skatari or, um, especially you know like. If they're next to militia or serfs or something like that, they really need to tower over them. They need to have that physical presence. And this gives that, I think, anyway, you know. You might agree, you might not. If you're watching, if you've watched this far into the video, you probably do agree. Um, yeah, look, I whinge and I bitch and I moan about the green stuff, but, yeah, it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. Um, saying that, though. This is the worst bit, getting the stuff off your fingers and getting it where you need it. Okay, I'll stop now. Okay, we've got a set of legs. So, oh, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I'm gonna put them down before I touch them. Uh, again, like I said, they're not perfect, but the profile is pretty good. You can see there and there, the profile is okay. I'm gonna just seen that I need to clean up a couple of little bits here. Uh, I've got the armor panel, edge of the armor panel there. Pretty good. Um, yeah, these are the big ones. Having the this profile at the back here, right? Getting it as smooth as you can. It always looks smoother now. And then when you get the primer on it, you look at it and go, oh my God, what have I done? Um, you can always go back and sand it though, um, even if you have primed it. Yeah, so try not to try not to dick about with it too much. Get it to that level. Get it right. Get it neat. Get it um, the profile correct. Get it as smooth as you possibly can at the back here. Not so worried about the front because you can sand that. Like I'll, I'll show you later. Um, 
yeah, get it, uh, get the gaps filled because you'll see those when paint goes into them, you'll see them. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this aside far, far away from um, where I'm working. I'm going to get my little leftover bit. I'm going to get him... More. You do you use quite a bit to make these um, these tick cloths? Probably a little bit more. Depends how thick you want them. You want them quite thick, I think. You know, I guess you'd call it maybe a millimeter thick, which is quite thick. Stretch them out. Put it on the um, on the wet part. <laughs> Otherwise, it won't come off. This can be a little bit rough, this section. So what we're going to do, see, that's what we want them to look like uh, at the end. So if we want them to look like that, we actually have to stick them to the back so that we get that, those two in the, in the front there, the two middle ones furthest forward and these two outside ones furthest aft. So here we go. So we just, you don't want, you don't need the um, belt buckle, by the way, because that, well, I don't use it because I just stick them underneath the, um, let me show you, I stick them underneath the, uh, that, on the, these, these Mark 3s, I stick them under that armour panel there anyway. Um, and even on the, um, even on the Mark 4s, you can't really see it, but there's a, there's a belt buckle that I stick them under there. This obviously needs to be primed. So, make a few dick cloths. We stick them there. Just press them, press them in nice and hard. Try and use this stuff as efficiently as you can. Don't need to be super neat at this stage. Um, so I'm doing five. Obviously, I'm doing five five guys at a time. So I want that. That's the number. Five is the magic number. Press them in because you want them to pick up all of that those raised sections at the back. Get a nice scalpel. This is a different scalpel. I always have a few on hand. Cut the sides. Again, all we're doing now is releasing them from the other green stuff. We're going to trim these neatly. Once they've set, so just take them. If there's any little bits here, just push them in. Keep them neat. Turn them up plastic side down and uh, let them dry there. So we're just going to leave them for as long as, well, these will just, they can just sit there until you're ready to prime the, until you're ready to glue the model together in a few days' time. Um, yeah, it takes like I said, this whole process does take a while. If I want to, if I want to build twenty of these guys, um, it's a week, start to finish, like from just pulling them out of the box, doing the legs, which is the big bit, and then um, you know choosing all the poses that I like. It's um, yeah, to build them, it's about a week, making all the dick cloths, waiting for the dick cloths to dry so that you can make more dick cloths. Um, saying dick cloths loads, just got to say that heaps. Um, yeah. All right. All right, bonus round. So I've made five dick cloths uh, and I've still got a little bit of green stuff left. So I don't want to waste it. What we're going to do, I'll show you the, the next stage of the true scaling process. This is a little bit further down the track, but if you've ever got leftover green stuff, just use it. Don't waste it. Um, I fill the bottom of this torso in like that, just so that it's pretty much flush. You then take, don't take, really don't use the one that you've just green stuffed um, because that's just a dumb idea because uh, you will touch it. And then just press it down so that, the green stuff has that indentation in it that you're going to need so that it's it can glue nicely to that um, socket there. So you get your indentation right, and that's about right. Now you can see 
ignore the stumpy little legs. You see how that's sitting now? See how that's really not right? It should sit down further to cover this lack of hips. See, there's no hips. This now is about what the proportions should look like. There's your your pectoral muscles. Picture a dude in this armor. The pecs muscles, then there's your abs, your rock hard abadabas. Um, and then you've got a set of hips. Oh, wait, he doesn't have any fucking hips at all. He's... He's just got like a stomach that's there and then it just goes down to the top of his leg bones and they those leg bones just attach to, um, I don't know. I don't know where the fuck they'd attach to. Do they just go into his spine? Where do they go? Who knows? So what we're going to do, we have it like this. We sit it forward and you're going to see, see that gap there? That gap there? That's, what, that's why we've got the dick cloth. We put the dick cloth hanging down the bottom there. We have our, uh, you see he's sitting back a bit. So you have him like this. So you see, he's, sorry, not sitting back, he's sitting forward. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use this. See, we've got, that's all right. That angle there is okay. You can see his, where his arms are gonna go is still in line with his legs. Um, you got your dick cloth at the front there. And then to hide the fact that old mate's got absolutely no hips um, at all, he's he's a, an abomination. Um, we use just some bits. You get your bits box and you, you just cover it up with some bits. Um, so you get some of these bits. And you just you go, oh, yeah, you know what? Pouches are good. How good are pouches? It's fucking handy. I really like the look of the Marines to have these sorts of pouches um, and lots of equipment because I feel like they would carry that, especially Alpha Legion who was sort of off wandering around doing sneaky shit. Um, those big ones are not the best, I find. Um, so I'll give you a better, better example. Um, here we go. This is more like it. So you can chuck some of these ones these ones are much better again i'm not gluing these these look it hides the fact that old mate's got no hips at all you could use guns you can use grenades or melter bombs or whatever you want a chain sword at the back is usually pretty good that's fallen off but yeah i'm just using i'm just doing this now to to use up the rest of the green stuff so it's also cutting down time for the next part of the process or the you know one of the la later parts of the process anyway there we go all right, final part of the video, this first section anyway. Um, you can see where we've ended up. We've got a little bit more height. The big height difference is noticeable here to here. Um, but also, if you look at the length of the shin, the length of this shin looks a lot more real. It looks a lot better. And when this is, this is the same, once you get this um, torso on, like I showed you before, this guy will be the height of a Primaris Marine. Now, you know, regardless of what you think about Primaris Marines, um, their scale is spot on. They look, they look right. Um, the legs are the right size. They've more or less gotten the proportions right up top. They, they do appear to have hips. Uh, I've got one here that is sitting, hanging around. So there's your Primaris Marine. Now this guy will sit a bit higher. Um, but you can see that we're, we're pretty close. We're getting a lot closer. And when I add a little bit more height to his torso, he'll look right. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up with me whinging about green stuff. Um, yeah, the next video in this series, I'll, I'll be putting them together. And you'll see um, any other little tips and tricks. There's not really much more to say. This is this is the hardest part. This is the bit that gets the results. The torso there, the trick, the tricks with the um, hiding hiding these the lack of hips, the lack of an abdomen, lack of a pelvis, um, and using using the dick cloth, using the pouches and things. Always hold onto those pouches, grenades, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, that's what that's where we. That's where we get to. I'll show you the other guy. Let's show you this guy because he's got... Oh, there he is. Um, so this guy, let's have him a look at him next to the Primaris Marine. And he is... Oh, he's a little bit shorter. 
He's a little bit shorter, but he's not far off, um, which would work if you are going to use this uh, for your old style Marines. You could still have a force of these next to Primaris. The Primaris is still going to be taller, uh, so it would still fit with the law. The, the Primaris are bigger, um, stronger, faster, whatever, whatever else they are. A few extra organs, whatever, but they're gonna, they're, they're still gonna be noticeably a little bit bigger, maybe a millimeter. There's probably a millimeter in it, I reckon. Um, yeah, there we go. Thanks, guys. Bye.